Choosing the right Linux distribution is very important because so many people just try to go like a top five list or, hey, what's the best Linux distro? Or, hey, is this one any good? And the answer to all these questions is, well, it just depends. And let me explain. We need to actually talk about what makes up a Linux distribution so you actually understand what you're installing. Because if you're just trying to install some random distribution off the internet or some random Linux distribution, you're just going to end up moving to Windows or Mac uh, because you expect everything to just work the same way. And they fundamentally work different. So what is the big difference and why do we even call it Linux distribution instead of Windows operating system or Mac operating system? Why don't we call it Linux operating system? Well, we can, but the distribution aspect of it is because everything can change at the foundational level. When you go to Windows or Mac, file manager always stays the same. The bootloader always stays the same. The display renderer stays the same. The login manager stays the same. All those things are the same, and it's always the same operating system with just extra programs on top. In Linux, when it comes to distributions, all those things can change. So let me explain. We're going to break down each one of those I just mentioned, and then talk about there's only three distributions that matter for a desktop Linux user, especially starting off. I don't care what a uh, neck beard or Linux vet that just wants to drive away users say, there's only three that matter. And let's go over that. So first off, what's in a distribution? I just mentioned it. The bootloader, this is what loads the operating system. Uh, you can actually load Windows with Linux bootloaders. You can load Mac with Linux bootloaders. Uh, all these things are basically what load the system. Now, the two common ones are systemd boot. Typically, if you're not gonna run like a menu or anything like that, systemd boot's what most uh, go with. Uh, or grub, if you wanna do any kind of theming or cool screens that uh, load your operating system, you're gonna want probably a grub bootloader. So there's more than that, but for today's video, I'm keeping it simple. Let's move on. The next is the init system. These initialize the devices to work on the system. Uh, typically, everything system D nowadays. I made a video in this article right here on ChrisTitus.com. You can actually click on this and it'll explain everything about system D and all the different components. But the short end of it is most things use system D uh, and you probably should learn a lot of its syntax because almost every modern big distribution uses it. Next up, so you've initialized your devices, you're booting into your system, is the display render. How are we going to dis display graphics? And there's only two that really matter, and that's Xorg and Wayland. And Xorg is kind of like the granddaddy. It just kind of works. And then Wayland you have over here, and it's kind of like the new hotness, better coded, but uh, still very buggy. And a lot of legacy programs don't work. Like I use Synergy and Barrier, and they don't work. Uh, and then also you just run into some kind of compatibility issues sometimes. So Wayland works for most people now out of the box, but I still miss a lot of the Xorg features and I still have those legacy programs. So every single install I do of Linux is using Xorg. Uh, so that's still my recommendation, but you can try out Wayland if you want. Uh, honestly, doesn't really make much of a difference to me other than those two things. And then we have the display manager and really this should be called a login manager, uh, but it really is called a display manager because Linux is run by highly technical, very gifted people that have zero marketing experience and try their hardest to basically scare users. <laughs> Maybe not scare users, but they're, they're obviously bad. Some things will named in Linux. Oh, I just could go on a 15 minute rant about that. But the display manager or login manager is basically three different things. And this is where we start to get a little bit variety on how things are presented. You can actually not use a display manager and just dump you right into the desktop. But if you do wanna log in, you're really gonna to want to install one of these three. There is more than this, but again, for simplicity's sake, there's light DM, which is kind of like the catch-all. Uh, very easy to do it, it's very light. And then we have SDDM, which is KDE. It's a little bit fancier. I really like SDDM, honestly, it's probably my favorite. Uh, with light DM, a very, very close second. It's, it kind of goes back and forth. It depends on the day. And then GDM, which is GNOME's one. And you might be thinking, what are all these things you're talking about? GNOME, KDE, all these things. Well, that's like the base system or the login or the des desktop environment. So when it comes to desktop environments, think of 
all the things, all the system utilities, the control center, all these things that make up a lot of the configuration of your operating system. That's what a desktop environment is. It's the look and feel. It's all the utilities to change like your resolution and other things. You don't necessarily need a desktop environment. Really, all you need is something to manage your windows. Uh, and you could manually configure all this stuff through config files if you wanted in Linux. But for ease of simple use, a lot of people like a full-blown desktop environment. And I would say the top three are GNOME, KDE, and XFCE. These are pretty com comprehensive. They're great. Uh, there's other ones out there like Mate that is like an old school version, but really these top three encompass it. For simplicity's sake, I say check out these three as it makes up so many distributions when it comes to Linux. And then there's Windows Managers is kind of what I use, but I don't recommend it for a new user because it really has no utilities. <laughs> you, you have to change the resolution through command line and there's all that nuance there what i don't want to get into today i'll probably make a whole video on window management but it it's still something that's really interesting for most people coming in remember the desktop environment most people think you need to install different distributions but you can have more than one desktop environment and switch between a whole host of different ones you can go from uh kde to gnome to xfce and they all look radically different. Uh, so the desktop environment really is what affects the utility set that you get and then also that look and feel. And then next up is distributions. Now, at the, when I started this off, I said there's three distributions you really need to know about when it comes to desktop Linux usage, and that is Fedora, Debian, and Arch. I would say 99% of the Linux desktop users will fall into one of these categories. And you might be thinking, what about Ubuntu? What about KDE Neon? What about Linux Mint? What about uh, all these other ones, elementary OS? All of those are Debian based. So most of the popular ones out on the market that most people know about are all just Debian at its core with just stuff added on. And that's the first thing you should know. And I, I even made a, a shirt said Debian, there is only one because so much is based on Debian. And it is great. And how you know it's based on Debian is how you install packages. The package manager is really the big thing here. And apt is probably the most popular package manager. To me, I don't see really a purpose in installing anything but Debian. Uh, you know, I think the next video I'm going to make is just doing like a Linux Mint or installing the desktop environment that Linux Mint uses on Debian. And you'll notice really quick, there's not really much difference other than it's a little bit less bloated and there's a lot less stuff installed, uh, which can be a blessing and a curse. But uh, Debian is the granddaddy, the, the best, in, in my opinion, when it comes to stability and reliability. So if you're looking for something incredibly stable and everyone uses it, Debian's typically it. The one downside to Debian, the con, why you wouldn't choose it, is there's not very many new packages. Even running a SID branch, which is like the bleeding edge of Debian, it's still like, you know, several months behind, sometimes up to six months behind, even on that, that development branch. Uh, so that's Debian. I would say, you know, install the Grub Bootloader, System D, Xorg. These are what basic settings are used when installing a, a base Debian spin. And I'll, again, in the next video, go over this and creating Linux Mint from Debian, basically, so you can see what I'm talking about. Next up is uh, Arch Linux. By the way, I use Arch. <laughs> Arch has a special place in my heart because it is the bleeding edge. You usually has uh, amazing packages, like you could install pretty much anything on Arch, and it'll be the the absolute newest it could be in pretty much any Linux system, which is great. And you can build stuff directly from Git, which means as it's being developed, you can install it and use it, which is, again, a blessing and a curse because sometimes there's bugs. And if you, I, and, I, and a lot of people say Arch isn't stable. It is stable with some caveats, like make sure you're updating your system every week. Make sure that you're not installing just all willy nilly from the AUR, which is this basically build service uh, that's created by the community to install packages. But sometimes people contribute and then forget about it and it just falls to the wayside. And then you go to install that package when it hadn't been updated and bad things happen. So there's some downsides to Arch, but 
it's great for being on the bleeding edge and being able to install anything. The downside, the biggest downside I see is people not updating their system on Arch. And then like six months later, they go to update their system or something. And then just the whole system breaks and there, you have all these key problems. There's ways around it and to fix it, of course. Uh, but it's probably the least stable of the three, but also has the newest packages and best accessibility. And as long as you know what you're doing, it's awesome. So I love Arch, but you should know those things up front. And then probably lastly, I want to touch on, and this is what I'm using right now is Fedora Linux. And it's like a branch between Debian and Arch. It's a, as if they almost had a baby, this is what you'd get. You get a little bit newer packages, not as new as Arch, but not as old as Debian. You have a more of a rolling kernel. So the kernel's more up to date than what you'd see on Debian. And it is... Uh, used, it's actually made by uh, Red Hat, which is one of the biggest manufacturers of Linux programs out there. I mean, they've, they've created so many amazing things for it. So it's, it's actually a lot more stable than your Arch counterpart. Like if I don't install or update Fedora in six months, and then I just go DNF update, it'll install, which is great. So that's kind of the beauty of Fedora. It's a good in-between ground, but for stability, I'd still say Debian is more stable than Fedora. So uh, kind of important to know. And I, I'll also do a base build of Fedora, which uh, probably sometime in the future, I want to do Debian first because I think that's what most people will go to. And also it has the best support. So the problem with Fedora, I would see the, the biggest downside to me is if you don't know much about Linux, a lot of how-to articles and guides online usually forget Fedora or it's less supported because less users use it. So it's it's more of the oddball between Debian and Arch because Debian and Arch, I think, have a, a bigger share of Linux desktop, especially when it comes to how-to articles. Uh, but how-to articles, I will say just a little blip on that. Don't blindly follow on because I can tell you there's so many 10 plus year old articles out there of Debian Linux that will get you in trouble if you followed them today. So these are the three you should choose, you know, that was six, but there's really only three <laughs> that you should choose, uh, Fedora, Arch, or Debian, and really that is it. Learn what makes up these uh, entire distributions and changing these things around. If I had to push you towards something, I would say for a bootloader, use Grub. For init system, it's going to be system D on almost any of these that I talked to about today. Display renderer, I would choose Xorg. And desktop environment, if you're coming from Windows, I'd choose KDE. If you're coming from Mac, I would choose GNOME. And then for a package manager, honestly, doesn't matter. All of these have pros and cons that I just outlined. Uh, and it just depends on your set up in your feelings. But now that you have a good basis, you can try these. And there's splinters of Arch. And same with Debian. You have your Ubuntu's, your, your Pop OS's, your elementary OS, Linux Mint. All these are Debian Linux at its core. And then you have Fedora, which honestly, I don't really know any uh, forks of Fedora. It just kind of, nobody really forks it for some odd reason. I'd be curious to see why on that. But this should give you a basis of where to start in Linux. Learn these things I've talked about. The next video, I'm going to be going over a full install, and we're going to do Linux Mint, basically. We'll, we'll use a base Debian install and then install each one of these components I talked about. And that way you understand each one of these components, because if you don't understand these components, you'll never understand Linux. And if you don't want to learn these components and you just want things to work, I don't recommend using Linux. So that's where I'm going to leave this video. If you want the full guide, again, check it out over at ChrisTitus.com. And with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below, and I'll see you in the next one.